Hi, everyone. Welcome to the group coaching call. Really good to have you here. This is the coaching call where I am um, experimenting with this and hope to do this once a month, where uh, those in the Our Highest Work community can come onto the call and ask uh, a question about creating your highest work. And I uh, will share whatever advice and feedback insight I have for you. And also, when you come and, come and ask the question, I'll also give you a chance to introduce yourself and others on the call can give their supportive, loving feedback about your introduction because your introduction is kind of like an elevator speech that um, is, let me just take a moment to say, it's really important, in my opinion, to practice your introduction. Uh, even if you don't go to networking events very often, when you get your introduction clear and resonant, you change other aspects of your business. When you get clear and resonant about your introduction, it's almost like you're, get, you're, you're more clear and resonant about who you are and what you do. And therefore, uh, your marketing becomes more clear and resonant in all kinds of ways. So um, uh, I took some questions in advance in the, in the event page, and I've already chosen the order of questions in the order that I think the question will help the, the, the question and the answer will help as many people as possible in this community. So as you listen to someone else's question, and as you listen to whatever feedback I have, try to listen for how this might apply to your business as well, to your highest work. And I've invited those who are on the call to be chatting uh, actively in the group chat. I love seeing that it's active and that you all are uh, passing notes among each other and maybe even taking notes uh, about what is being said that, that could be useful for others who read the chat later. Okay, so the chat will be, the chat transcript will be available to you all as well. All right, so the first person I'm going to bring on is Ed Herzog. And uh, Ed, if you don't mind uh, raising your hand so I can see where you are. Okay, great. I'm going to bring you on, Ed. And um, Okay. Yeah. Hello. Good. Good to good to have you here. Uh, and oh, and and actually, before I go in with the with the intro, I'm gonna just quickly um, say what intro format you might choose to use, and I'll just do my intro real quick for those who are watching this and don't know who I am. So um, here's a simple elevator speech, you know, format. Okay. So your name, what type of person you love to help? Maybe their age range. Maybe you spoke focus on women or men, maybe focus on people in a certain profession or people in a certain life stage or people who are going through a particular challenge right now. Okay. Um, next one is what do you love to help them create in their life? What problem you, you help them solve or what ideal state you help them create? Okay. Next thing is uh, maybe you want to say a little bit about your modality or the process you use to help them create that change. The next part is any kind of credibility indicator that you can say. Years you've done this work or number of people you've helped or even a particular story, uh, even just a 30-second or 20-second story of a particular change you helped a recent client or even a little testimonial. Someone said some work about you. Um, and last thing is connect your work to a bigger cause in the world. And finally, you can end with your name again. So that's a suggestive format. And you can, of course, use the format to your own liking, I would suggest try to keep your um, elevator speech to about a minute, a minute and a half. Uh, in a particular situation, you can go longer, but uh, you know, even if it's just um, at this time anyway, just keep it to a minute, minute and a half. And as I said earlier, the more you can practice your elevator speech and get clear about it and get resonant with it, it's kind of like you're practicing like you're an actor. Okay, and you practice it in front of the mirror. Practice it like you're an actor and getting the nuances of how you say certain parts of it. Okay? And as you say your elevator speech, I'm going to ask everyone in the chat to give you their loving, supportive feedback on what words and phrases they heard that resonated with them. What are they likely to remember from what you said? Maybe it's just a word that they heard that they were going to remember or a phrase or an idea. Okay, so this is going to be helpful for, for everyone to see what's resonating. So I'm just going to practice real quick mine. My name is George. Uh, I love working with life coaches who are helping clients with their personal development. And what I help life coaches do is to uh, stabilize their business so they have a full slate of clients and they financially. And, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm hearing some, uh, some 
I'm going to just mute everyone for now. I'm hearing some background noise. Uh, so uh, I, love, I love helping life coaches stabilize their, their business financially, and more importantly, make sure that their business is aligned with their highest work. And one of the things I also do with my clients is to help them achieve online visibility in a way that's authentic to them and that builds their online tribe. I've been doing this work full time for seven years and my passion is, and I've worked with over a thousand clients and students, and my passion is that everyone in the world can do their highest work and actually make a living doing it. So again, my name is George and it's good to be with you today. So you see, that's a simple intro. I don't know how long, that, I think that was less than a minute, I think. And uh, so with that, I'm gonna bring Ed on to do his intro and then to also ask his question that I think will be helpful for, for lots of folks here. So hello, Ed, good to hey. have you us. Hey, and uh, so go ahead, when you're ready, share your intro with us. I will, if you have a timer for yourself, uh, Ed, some kind of stopwatch on your phone or something, you can use that. Otherwise, just look at your clock um, and I'll, also, uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll let you know when, when, you're, when your time is, is close. Sound okay. good? Sure, sounds and great. Also, as, as Ed speaks, please uh, listen for what resonates with you. Is there a word that he said or a phrase or an idea he said that resonates with you that you're probably gonna remember afterwards? And, and um, I invite you to chat that into the group chat for everyone to see. And so that'll be part of the chat transcript that Ed can look at later. So, um, Ed, when you are ready, the okay. floor is yours. Okay, great. Hi, everyone. My name is Ed Herzog, and I like to work with people who are in the second half of life, people who have kind of lived a traditional life, you know, kind of played the rules of the game the way society tells them to, and have found that that just isn't satisfying their soul, and they want and need and crave something more in their life. And so what I help them do is to put together uh, an authentic life, a life that is uh, built around their most important values, a life that connects and resonates with their heart desire. Um, I do this through a variety of modalities, um, primarily by coaching people, but you know, basically I also use tools from counseling, I use tools from communication, I use tools from, um, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought Don't there. Keep going. Um, Practice. So, but anyway, so I use a, a variety of different tools in order to get people from, you know, from this position of being stuck in a life that really isn't who they want to be to a life that resonates, to a life that is what they want. And um, about uh, so, 20 no, seconds. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no worries. Uh, I kind of lost my, lost my train of thought there. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, the most important thing is for people to be alive, so for people to feel alive and feel connected and to, to, you know, really be living from their heart, living from their deepest, most inner desires. That to me is, is really what life is about. Mm. Wonderful. And your name again? Oh, and, and my name again is Ed Herzog. Great. And thank you, Ed, for going first, um, for being put on Thanks, the spot Ed. and just being willing to practice. And that's what, yay, thank you, yes. <laughs> Barbara is clapping for you. Um, yeah, you, you uh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you for your courage. And you know, this is the thing, it's like I, I, when, I, when people come to these calls, I, uh, see yourself among a circle of loving and supportive peers who are cheering you on and just, open for you to practice what it is that, that's on your heart and mind. And thank you for those who are also chatting in the chat to let uh, Ed know what, what idea, phrase, or, um, you know, uh, yeah, what word or phrase or idea you heard that you're probably gonna remember from what he said. Because the thing about it is when we talk, say our elevator speech, uh, people only hear you know, <laughs> like a word or phrase or maybe two or three, that's it. And so it's nice to see what people are resonating with so that you can emphasize those in the future, maybe say a little bit more about them, you know? So thank you all for, 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 for helping Ed out with that. It's really wonderful. And also for, as you see this, you'll see that what's resonating and some of you can borrow words and phrases to use in your elevator pitch as well. All right, Ed, uh, go ahead with your question. If you, do you have your question in front of you or do you want me to? I don't, but I mean, I, I can you kind don't. of just crop it off my head. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, my, my basic challenge I find is that, you know, I don't sell concrete benefits. So I can't tell somebody, if you work with me, you're going to, I don't know, lose 20 pounds, or you're going to, you know, start earning six figures, or, <laughs> uh, you know, you'll be in a new job. I mean, for me, 
you know, if you look at, for example, if you're familiar with Maslow's pyramid, you know, I'm working at the higher levels of the pyramid. And I think, yes. you know, that the potentially tougher sell, although if you, you know, if you disagree or have a, you know, so, it's, but it's, it's harder to put into words that, that, you know, make an easy sell. So, yeah. uh -huh. you know, so sometimes I'm just not sure how to communicate what it is I do, what the outcomes are, what the benefits are. Yeah. Um, Great. So that for me is, is a really big dilemma. Okay. Thank you for that question because I, I asked you to go first because I think a lot of us can, can relate to that, right? Not, not your head. If you can, if you can relate to what, what, <laughs> what head is saying. Yeah. Lots of, lots of nods and, and thumbs up. Thank you. So um, let me uh, go ahead and, and share my thoughts on this. Now I have been teaching this kind of marketing stuff for seven years, you know, full time. And I made a transition. I used to be teaching what a lot of internet marketers are saying, which is, oh, you've got to have, which is what your question is. You've got to have those concrete benefits. Yes, even though you help people with spiritual growth, it results in weight loss. <laughs> even though you help them with um, you know, their, their values, it results in a new job. You know? so something, but I have kind of, I've shifted my thoughts on that. I really have. And, and, and not just because I want to, because I've seen people successful who don't sell concrete benefits. So that, that's my first question for you is, do you know anyone who is doing the kind of thing you want to do and who seems to be having, um, you know, getting clients basically? That's my first question for you. And if the answer is yes, then, uh, and I, I invite you to write down a list of people and just, just be on the lookout. And this is for all of you. Okay? This is true for all of you. Look for people who are doing the kind of thing you want to do, who seem to be at least fairly viable in their business. Write down a list of names and then contact them to say, would you be willing to talk with me for just 15 minutes? And would you be willing to talk with me? I am new in your industry. I really wish, I'm so proud of your success. And I, 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 you know, I'm just so grateful that you are modeling the way. You know, you're really paving the way for someone like me. Would you be willing to talk for 15 minutes to share with me or maybe just reply to this email? Let me know, how did you get your first clients you know how did you get your first clients or do you have any advice for someone who are, who's getting clients now really I, I i ask this of you because most of you many of you i don't know maybe all of you may never have a chance to work with me but if you do this exercise you may not need another marketing coach and i know i'm you know marketing coaches would never say it's this <laughs> what i'm saying but truly i, I want i want the best you know, for you, and I want you to do this exercise. I have a blog post called um, Conduct Niche Mentor Interviews. And if you remind me, I, I will try to remember to post, uh, to post a link to that, to that blog post. Um, so that's my first answer for you. Now, the second answer for you is, if you don't know anyone, if you're like, well, what I'm doing is so unique, right? Okay. Um, um, actually, so, yeah. So if you're saying, what, am I, what I'm doing is so unique, I don't really know anyone doing this thing. Then my answer is, do you know anyone who is spending money on a service similar to yours? Do you know anyone who's spending money on a service similar to yours? So um, actually, Ed, if you can unmute yourself and do you have any thoughts on that? What is a service similar to yours, Ed, that people are spending money on? Or anyone can chat in, 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 their, in their chat as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously there are books that sell on these topics that, you know, yeah. interest me that I want to help with people with. So, you know, at that level, I know no, that. But, I know no, but let's, let's talk about ideas. actually service providers. Service okay. providers, yeah. People who are spending that kind of level of money that you would be charging for, not, not exactly what you do, but something related. You know, so for example, right. you might say, well, uh, life, people hire life coaches, right? Mm -hmm. Life coach is a very broad term. But some right. life coaches, you know, people hire them to, help them figure out, well, they might be thinking about their career, right? Like, oh, I'm not, my life is not aligned. When, when they think about values, a big part of it is I'm doing, I'm spending eight hours a day doing stuff that's not aligned with my values. So career right. coaching might be one of those related services. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, certainly psychologists work with people who come in with these sort of kind of Beautiful. mental malaise yeah. issues. You don't, you know, they may not even be able to articulate well, but there's a you know, deep unsatisfactory, unsatisfactoriness mm -hmm. to their lives. Um, so okay. certainly, you know, psychologists, social workers, you know, these other professions are related to coaching, 
work in that area. Okay, beautiful, great, great example. And so uh, then, then the next question I have for you then is how is your service a better fit than the usual psychologist they would go to or the usual career coach they would go to? How is your service a better fit for the people you most want to help? Does that make sense? So one example might be, well, I, my you know, psychologists go into the, the childhood, you know, they go into all these issues, but then they, they may take three years working with a psychologist to finally get to talking about the thing that I directly talk with my clients about and help them, you know, finally step up in that area of their life. Does that make sense? So one, one thing that's more unique or better about mm -hmm. for them, for this problem is that it's, it gets to the issue faster or that it, um, gets the issue with less cost or it gets the issue with more, more joy or more uh, enjoyment or do you see what I mean? So, so mm -hmm. the irony of this, there is, are some tangible benefits to mm -hmm. how you do it. That's mm -hmm. different from how someone else does, someone else does it in a more mainstream way. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Yeah. That's very helpful. Yeah. That's good. And so, and the next question. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And then a further uh, question then is, to the people you know who are spending money on psychologists Ed, or spending money on career coaches, spending money on life coaches, if you can find some of these people and ask them, um, hey, I'm, I'm getting into, you know, I'm getting into doing this kind of work and I know you are, you have a coach or you have a psychologist right now. Can you, can you help me out by, by just ask, answering this one question for me? What made you decide to work with them? Mm -hmm. What made you decide to work with them? Was it something that they offered that was really intriguing for you? Or was it maybe there was a triggering event for you that said, okay, I really need to go see a psychotherapist or I really need to go see a, a career coach. Yeah, so there was either a triggering event, either that, or there's something that was being offered that was really a, a intriguing them. So if you do this kind of research, in, in fact, what, what, what we're really talking about is really productive market research. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you do this, then you'll realize, oh, this is why people go to these, this is why people spend money on services similar to mine. And therefore I can use the same strategies, you know, in my own voice to market myself effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and the last thing, uh, a couple other ideas that are going to be useful for everyone, I think is that, um, if, you know, while you are doing all this stuff of market research, also be doing, um, and, and by the way, uh, Adam, hearing some back there, so I'm just gonna... um, oh. <laughs> You go ahead and mute yourself. Um, while you're doing all this research, also be doing a strategy that's good for the midterm, maybe even the short term. And that is to be educating your ideal tribe. Okay, so be, be uh, sharing content on a regular basis. I just, I just uh, uploaded a video to Our Highest Work today about five ways that are natural for me to share content. For me, I, for the life of me, I've tried writing blog posts for years and I just can't do it. I just don't, some of you love writing and that's awesome. <laughs> I wish I had that love. Right now, I don't love writing. I just, it doesn't come naturally to me. I just have a heart. I get so intimidated by, by thinking about writing blog posts. But what I don't get intimidated by is I'm on my dog walk and I put out my phone and I talk into the phone. <laughs> you know, some of you, for that, some of you, that intimidates you. It doesn't intimidate me because I've been doing this for, for a while now. And then after I do my dog walk video, I then go, well, maybe some people don't want to watch my video. So I, I want to make the courtesy f for them of typing out what I just said. And I type it out on my phone, so it's very limited. It's very non-intimidating. And I see myself, you know, typing away. The words are going up. I'm like, wow, I'm typing fast. And so that's what doesn't intimidate me, and that's how I create content Monday through Friday. For another, other people, some of you are amazing at participating in groups. You probably don't even realize this, but you comment in the Facebook group and you share like life-changing advice for people. Why not take at the end of each day? Ask yourself, where did I participate today in Facebook groups? What comments did I make today that I can copy and paste that into my website as a blog post or with, some, with a few edits maybe? That's how I also have done that. And that's how I came up with these really long, oh, the third way is clients ask you questions and you reply to them by email. Why don't you just take that email and turn it into a blog post? That's how I've come up with my blog posts. 
this dog walk video or replying in a group or clients asking me a question and I just had to come up with an answer for them in that term. So, so, so be doing this, all of you who are a messenger of some kind. You work with transformation. You help people better their lives. You should, I put should in quotes, but it, it, would, it would serve the world so much for you to be sharing your valuable life experience uh, through a way that's natural for you to do so. So I encourage you to do that. If you do that over the mid to long term, you will build your ideal tribe and the, the marketing will, uh, my aim is to help all of you get to the point where you no longer have to market yourself because all of your new clients are coming to you by word of mouth, either because you serve your clients so well, they just naturally spread the word or your content is out there working for you every day to bring you tribe members. So that's, that's an advice for all of you that will be helpful. Uh, the final piece of advice I think helpful for all of you and for you as Ed as well is, <laughs> sorry about that, buddy, is <laughs> heard something at the door. Um, think about other service providers who have clients that your service would be so great for. Okay, so for example, Ed, for you, there are career coaches who help people with their resume, who help people do interview stuff, but those, those people might really need to be clarifying their values first. And so you come along in their journey of transformation, this service provider serves here along the journey and you serve beforehand. Or maybe you serve afterwards. So maybe you talk to, um, you know, maybe you'll talk to a, to a relationship coach who is helping people with their relationship, their marriage, you know, maybe even going through a divorce or, or recovering from one. And then they realize that at the same time, they need to clarify their life values and what's really important for their life. And then they refer, the relationship coach then refers them to you along that life transformation journey. Does that make sense? And as you think about service providers who serve along that life transformation journey of your ideal client, you talk with them about partnerships to say, hey, you know what? I know you serve people like the, the people I want to serve. I would love to uh, collaborate with you. You know, if you have someone that I can help, I'd love to serve them uh, after you serve them or before you serve them. And if, it, it's, if, if it's appropriate for you, uh, I would love to give you a commission for referring someone to me or at least to send you a gift certificate to your favorite spa, you know, or favorite restaurant. However, however, you, however I can thank you. Or I can give you uh, some, some sessions for, for you or for some of your premium clients in exchange. And in fact, some of you may want to even go to these service providers and say, listen, I know your clients are dealing with these issues and I can help them. And you don't help your clients with the issues I help them with. I love to help them with these issues and I'd be happy to give them two free sessions to your premium clients or to all of your clients who are willing to take me up on it. Two free sessions because they're your clients. So you can give that as a value add, as a bonus to your clients. And I get to talk with them and work with them. And if they want to work with me later afterwards, they, you know, they pay me for that service and you know, you can work on a commission or just, you know, if they don't even take that, then that's, that's fine too. So is that helpful everyone to just kind of share some of these strategies? Nod, thumbs up. Yeah. It's helpful. Okay, great. All right. So let, um, let me now go on to, um, oh, the, uh, uh, let me, let me clarify that last piece because um, it might be confusing for some of you. So for example, you know, um, Ed might go to a, um, again, a career coach, right? Who, um, or maybe go to a life coach who is helping people with certain life transitions, but not so much on the values part of it. And Ed, I might be saying wrong exactly what you do, but that's what I heard. <laughs> and, and so basically, uh, they, Ed might go to a life coach and say, hey, I know you work with people on certain transition points, but not so much on the values. And I'd love to give your best clients two free sessions to work on the, their, their highest values and how they can integrate that into their life. I know that's not what you do with them. And as, just as a value add, as a bonus, that they don't have to pay for those. You know, but I'm giving it to, you, to your clients for free. And of course, afterwards, they may choose to work with me further. Um, but some may not, and that's just as a, as a thank you to your clients. So, so hopefully that was, that was clear. All right, next I want to bring on um, uh, the next person I see on the call that has a question is, uh, I want to bring on is Gina. 
So uh, Gina, I'm going to bring you on to do your intro, and then uh, you can share your question after that. How does that sound? Sound good? Good <laughs> Hello, Gina. Good morning. Aloha. Aloha. So when you're ready, still you're morning. Ready. I'm still in morning mode. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when you're ready, you can go ahead with your intro. And just uh, okay. all, all about 90 seconds, yeah. Thank you. I'm and Gina those, um, those who are, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Those who are listening to, to Gina and on the chat, um, go ahead and share what word, phrase, or idea you heard from her that resonates with you in her intro. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm Gina Ryan, and I work with men and women with um, stress, anxiety, panic, and PTSD. Um, what I help them to do is uh, main to, uh, again, I'm a little nervous, to get um, emotional peace, emotional peace and freedom, um, because it's, it's quite uh, trapping a feeling. And how I do it is with one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I'm also uh, offering a program, a four-module program on how to actually inquire on to how you're uh, going to deal with this. And the credibility that I have is my own story of 20 plus years of anxiety, mm -hmm. debilitating anxiety mm -hmm. that I uh, cleared, and then the past 10 years of helping eating disordered clients uh, clear their anxiety issues, which is what was leading into their eating disorders. Um, and my purpose, my purpose in life is to um, alleviate suffering by helping other people to live their life from a higher and more compassionate perspective. Again, my name is Gina Ryan. Wonderful. Good job. Yay. <laughs> thank you for hearing me. Yeah. And thanks, everyone, for posting in the chat what phrase, word, or idea you heard from Gina that resonated with you that you're probably going to remember. Uh, and also, I saw at least one question in there from Pavel as well. So thank you, Pavel, for that. So yeah, feel free to post anything that you thought, gosh, Gina, I, I, I heard that, but that confused me or something like that. So mm -hmm. that'd be helpful to, for Gina later. All right, Gina, do you, do you have your question in front of you? or Because I have it in front of me. I don't have it in front of me, so okay. if you would like to read it. Yes, sure, sure. Um, so what I saw that you wrote was how to consciously continue marketing online and the possibility of adding a course for those who are not ready for one-to-one -one engagement, yeah. okay, for some reason. So um, consciously continue marketing online. Okay, so uh, I think earlier what I shared, shared with Ed, probably a lot of that can apply, I imagine, to, to yeah. what you're working with as well. Um, but something else I will share that I think will be an additional help is to separate enrollment from content. I have made this shift in the last couple of years, and I'll tell you, it has been amazing for me. Um, what I mean, and, and because your question was about online marketing, this is, this is particularly important. When we are when we are um, in person, right, talking with someone, like trying to help them, um, we don't typically also immediately think, how can I sell them on more stuff? Because we have this personal connection and we don't want to seem like a salesperson and it just doesn't seem natural. But for some reason, we forget that online. And I know what the reason is, is because so many marketing coaches are teaching that whenever you are teaching, whenever you are helping people, you should always be thinking, how can this person become a client or a referral source or a, uh, you know, something? How can, how can I use this person after I teach them and, and help them? And I've made, I, I used to teach that too, right? Like content marketing. Right? And I, I, I shouldn't, content marketing isn't always about being a salesperson as you teach. But it's been popularized these days, education-based selling. Listen, education is very important in the mid to long term to grow your ideal tribe so that you can successfully and in a non-pressure way sell to them. But to, to, to add those two together is what makes a lot of us feel icky about what we do online. Yeah. And we don't have to feel icky anymore. When we separate in our minds and in our actions, enrollment from content. So a lot of what I said earlier about um, you know, speaking, speaking to Ed and to all of you, the strategies I shared earlier was enrollment, right? Things like doing the market research, things like um, going up and talking with people, well, uh, referral partners, that kind of thing, enrollment. And also 
going up and talking with someone in a, maybe you see someone in a Facebook group, you know, and they are sharing some issue that they're dealing with that, you know, your service can really help them with. And maybe you see this on LinkedIn, on Facebook or somewhere else, right? It's okay as part of enrollment to privately message them and say, Hey, I'm Gina. And I just, I'm a part, I'm a fellow member of this group. And I noticed that you were talking about that. And I just wanted to offer myself up as a resource to you. Um, I actually do this kind of thing. I help people as a, you know, for a living on this stuff. So if you want to, uh, if you're looking for, for someone to help you with that, uh, a provider to help you with that, please think of me. Or if you just want to, to chat, you know, whatever you're willing to do for free. If you want to chat, do a, do a free chat, I'm happy to do that for you as well. Or if you have any questions, I'm happy, to, I'm happy to help you with that. But you see how I led with the enrollment because that was the intention. A lot of times what we do is we kind of lead with trying to help them, but then we, we're secretly trying to enroll them. Yeah. I'm now flipping that on its side. I'm bringing the transparency out to say, actually, you know, Bob, this is what I do for a living. So think of me as a service provider. But if you, for some reason, are not ready to, to, to go with that, I have these free resources or have, I can do a free chat with you. Do you see how that flips this on its side? But it's so much more honest. And it's, it feels so much better um, to, to do that. Uh, now, I said separate enrollment and content. So when you are doing enrollment for your business, you focus on enrolling as a focus and, and as a transparent approach. You also, part of your day or part of your week, should be working on content. And this is where you go into Facebook groups and simply help out without trying to sell. Um, sim, uh, you know, you post on your Facebook or post on your LinkedIn or post on your, um, blog or, or, or reach out for podcast interviews or whatever you do for content, you know, post on YouTube videos. So that's what I would, uh, really advise, uh, Gina is for you to be doing both activities. Yeah. Some of you and Gina it may be true. Some of you are doing content a lot. You're helping out a lot but you're not doing any enrollment activities or you, maybe you're not doing enough of it. Yeah. I have one day a week. I work five days a week and one of those five days a week, I focus on enrollment. So even I am, am still doing enrollment. And for me, enrollment right now these days is I'm, I'm, I have a big project of completely doing a whole new website. And so during my enrollment day, I'm focused on a new website that's, that's, um, speaking to my ideal client, but wow. right. So my new website and what, how I write it is speaking to my ideal client. Now for you enrollment right now, maybe you just got to get some clients. And so that means looking for, for people you can privately message in on Facebook that you can say, Hey, this is what I do. So think of me, we're looking for referral partners or all the other strategies that I, I was speaking with, uh, with Ed about. Okay. All right. So be sure to carve out time in your week or in your day for enrollment. Okay, so um, um, so Gina, is that helpful? Anything else, Gina, you want to want to ask or say about that? No, that's very helpful because that's um, I'm realizing what you said. I'm in Facebook groups a lot, and I'm giving out a lot of information, and I it just naturally comes anyway. It yes. just feels good to do. It feels yes. really good to of do. Of course, that. yes. But the place where I think that flipping because they private message me all the time. Everybody wants to to have the chat or ah. get that they actually do need and they can feel that we would be a good match. But yeah. I haven't flipped it into, I'm still in help, just Gina, Yes, help. yes, just help, help, help. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. help, help, help. I haven't turned it into enrollment at all. Yeah, okay. Really, but, yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Um, so an important mindset idea about enrollment is this. For your ideal client, they are actually looking to hire someone, though this is important. Because your ideal client isn't saying, how can I get the most out of this person without ever paying a dime? <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I don't think that way. And I, I don't think any of you think that way. And none of you on this call are like, how can I get the most out of someone, especially their one-on-one -on -one time without getting a dime? No, you think, gosh, if this person's willing to give me some time. That's like really great because I know they do this for, well, they have to know you do this for a living. Otherwise, they think you're just, a, you're just a friend who has a hobby and you have some full-time job and you just like talking to people about this hobby thing of yours. So that's why it's so important to flip it, to say, oh yeah, this is what I do for a living and I'd love to serve you if you're looking for a service provider. Otherwise, 
the, where, how I'm able to serve for free in a sustainable way is I have these blog posts or I, I have a free monthly call. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. so yeah. So think about ways that you could serve people who aren't yet ready to hire or, or don't, can't afford it with sustainable ways. Blog posts, videos, an ebook. Or a monthly call where you invite them to say, "Yeah, I do. I do free coaching or free support on those calls." So, Beautiful. yeah. All right. Um, wonderful. So uh, next up is Barbara, and um, Barbara, I'm going to bring you on, and I would love for you to do your intro when you feel ready. <laughs> hello, George. Hello, hello. My name is Barbara Amalia Schaefer Burdner. I'm a Soul's Wisdom Muse with namealchemy.net, and I work with women leaders who they're leaders in their work, but they've lost connection in the rest of their lives. And often the connection uh, happened through a trauma, the disconnection happened through a trauma, like a illness or a head trauma or a bad car accident or loss of a loved one, or even sometimes through a tough divorce. And I bring these women from fractured and scattered to wholeness. And I do that by reading and clearing and healing their blocks that prevent them from sharing their natural brilliance. Mm. So I catalyze and I activate and I connect women to their soul wisdom codes, which is their hidden inner knowledge. And that's like deep inside of them. And it unlocks their own empowerment and confidence so they can get rid of their self doubt and rebuild their self trust and have a lot more fun and adventure in life. And I experienced a severe head trauma uh, where I was dead for seven minutes. And during that time, I spent what would seem like about seven years in this time mm -hmm. uh, to my own consciousness. And during that time, I received information that I embody and I offer as soul wisdom sessions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. And really what I connect with probably the most is that... So 90 seconds, just so you know. Mm -hmm. To create world peace, mm -hmm. um, to cr create inner peace mm -hmm. and relationship peace. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you, Barbara. That was great. Yeah. I, um, My heart is pounding. Like yeah. Good for you. Good for you. For, that, that, that's the that's thing about courage is to do it. In, you know, even though you feel the heart pounding, you're still doing it, which is great, which is what's important. <laughs> Can I breathe? Please? Yeah, you can breathe. Yeah, breathe, breathe. Deep breaths. So thank you, everyone, for chatting. Uh, thoughts you heard, ideas, words, phrases you heard from Barbara that resonated with you that you're probably going to remember. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for saying that. And uh, Barbara, you can look back on that later as well. All right. So um, your question, if you, if you have it in front of you, or actually... Um, I'll, I'll just, for the sake of time, I think, I think what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just say what your, what your question is, because I think it's, gonna, it's one that a lot of us can resonate with, uh, including me, is to how do we describe what we do when what we do is so non-mainstream, okay? Like, if you're a plumber, I mean, it's like you say, oh, I'm a plumber, everyone knows. I'm a real estate agent, everyone knows what that means, but wisdom codes, you know, or light body. I mean, I, I, having heard some of, uh, know, know, more, know more of your story, Barbara, um, I think actually one of the fascinating things about your story, Barbara, and all of you, is you have a certain like really cool modality that if you say it, spend 30 seconds talking about it, people will be fascinated by it. So that's part of your practice for your elevator speech is to practice. And I, I didn't hear you say light body. I think light body is a really interesting concept that okay. I would definitely add into your elevator speech. I love you talked about your, your near-death experience. I don't know if you call it that or not, or a death experience. It was a death experience, yes. Yeah, and, and near-death experience, people, that's mainstream. So people know what that is. So that's a really nice connection to, to your story. And so please, uh, that's absolutely important. And, and the fact that your credibility indicator is that you had an experience with source consciousness <laughs> or conscious <laughs> experience with it or that you still remember it that mo most of us have forgotten about it. So that's huge. It's, it's like for some people, you were able to meet with God and bring back some stuff. And people are like, I want to meet with someone who met with God, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, so that's really important part. Um, okay. So what I'll say to, to Barbara and all of you who are, are having trouble describing what you do, it's because you are an innovator. 
you are bringing forth a new way of being into the world, a new way of thinking, a new way of feeling, a new way of doing that is not yet mainstream. And maybe you're doing it in a way, uh, the modality and process is not yet mainstream, not like plumbing, real estate agent, okay? And because it's so innovative and so unique, that's why you're having trouble because when you talk about this stuff, you're gonna get some wrinkled you know, <laughs> faces. And, and that's why you get that feedback and therefore you think, I, I'm not clear on what I do. No, you, you, you are clear on what you do and you're working on practicing your elevator speech so that um, the people you're talking to, there's some, there's some hooks into mainstream, the near-death experience. You know? um, there's some hooks into mainstream like you, know, you said fun and adventure, right? So you use those hooks into the mainstream in your elevator speech so people can go, oh yeah, I want that. And even if it's not tangible, fun and adventure is not tangible, but it's very much what people want. To then to talk about, fascinate them then with the, the modality that, that you work with. Um, one example, right? Life coaching, did you know this? But life coaching has only been on the planet, I mean, I should say, been in the mainstream consciousness for less than about 20 years, 20, 25 years. And it was just added to the Merriam-Webster dictionary a few years ago, the term life coaching. So now it's starting to become mainstream where 30 years ago, you said life coaching, people are like, what are you talking about? But people now go, oh yeah, okay, so you're like someone who is really good at listening and helping me achieve a life that I really want, right? So um, that's an example where as you keep educating the, 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 the public, your thing, and when I say the public, I should say, as you keep educating individual after individual and audience after audience, light bodies, wisdom codes, those kinds of things where people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard Barbara talk about that. When they hear it a second time and a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time, that's why you're part of your job, everyone who is an innovator here, part of your job is to do as much education as possible. Um, I, ideally, as much speaking to audiences as possible, whether it's live uh, speaking or whether it's doing through webinars or whether it's through Google Hangouts or whether it's on a podcast, reach out to be interviewed on the podcast. Barbara, you should definitely be reaching out to be interviewed on podcasts for sure. I listen to, I, I subscribe to 60 podcasts. Um, probably half of them are spiritual type of podcasts and you would be like a great guest on, on, on shows like those. And many of you would actually. So. When people hear, like, if, I, if I'm subscribed to 60 podcasts and I hear you on two of those podcasts, suddenly you seem like a celebrity to me. Does that make sense? You seem like an authority. So, you know, think about your ideal audience. And this, this may be worth asking. You mentioned women leaders. Ask your ideal clients, whether they are actually clients or people you would love to work with. Ask them how they get information. So for, for all of you, ask your ideal clients how they get information information do they listen to podcasts and if so which ones do they follow a blog and if so which one do they subscribe to email newsletters and if so which who do they get emails from do they are they in a facebook group? actually you can check what facebook groups they're in i don't know if you all know this but you can go to facebook and you know what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take a moment because i think this is really interesting um to to to, to see and i think for for uh, just as an example, we're talking with Barbara. So I'm going to go to Barbara's uh, Facebook profile here, and I'm going to show you how to go to someone's profile, your ideal client's profile, and find out what Facebook groups they're in. So let me just share my screen with you, and you can see this on the screen. Those of you who are listening to this, you can watch the video later. So here I am on Barbara's profile, and I move my mouse over the word more, and I click on groups. Okay. And I scroll down and look, Barbara is part of 92 public open. Now, Barbara is, is she's a Facebook queen. And so she is more active on Facebook. I think more savvy than, than most of us are. So, so you're probably not going to find someone who, with, with um, you know, more <laughs> than maybe two dozen groups. <laughs> so Barbara, you're giving us a lot of good, good, uh, good, <laughs> so good things to play with here. So, yeah. so look, at, look at how I can find what, what groups Barbara is in. And so what I would say is, let's say Barbara was an ideal client of mine. I would go here and I go, gosh, um, which groups can I see that I'm interested in as well? Maybe the human design, you know, maybe the, um, uh, 
spiritual nourishment. Yeah, maybe the spiritual nourishment network, maybe the shared business tips, right? So these are all that I could join and be helpful in. And mo most importantly, this is, a, this is key. Not only should you be helpful in groups that you're part of when you have time to do that, but you should also um, be connecting with the host, the moderator, the admins of that group to create a, create a friendship with them, be helpful to them, comment on their stuff. And so that you can eventually reach out to say, hey, I know you've got a group here. I'd love to give a talk with them about this, you know, share commissions that people sign up, all that stuff, okay? So uh, the other thing I wanna show you is on Facebook, you can look at someone's events. So click on events after, uh, under more and say, gosh, what events does Barbara take part in that I can maybe connect with the host of that event because the host of that event will probably do more events that people like Barbara would want to take part in. Does that make sense? So this is how you find um, potential referral sources just through Facebook alone. Um, okay, so, oh, uh, other important things. Um, pick audiences where you have to explain less so that they, that, but they still get it. Right. So you wouldn't speak to, you know, with, with what you do, Barbara, maybe you wouldn't speak to a group of plumbers. <laughs> I say plumbers because been, that's been on my mind. You wouldn't, you wouldn't speak to a, a group of mainstream peep atheists. Okay. Right. You would speak to the spiritual nourishment network. So you would pick audiences where when you say something, they don't have to dig very far into their understanding. Okay. Final thing I'll say is how do you describe what you do is keep it short. Okay, when, it, when you talk about a title, so actually that's, that was your main question, Barbara, is what, what, what title should I use? What's the... Was, I mean, Soul's Wisdom Muse, that seems to get it, but the, mm -hmm. the teaching, although, George, you gave me lots of good, because what I teach is a new way of being. Yes. I yes. do. That yeah. is. Um, and I had... And you could even say an upgraded way of being, you know, if you want to use that. But yeah, and, and, a, a new, and, a new and, and, and more fun and, and adventurous way of being. So um, when it comes to a title, keep it short. We tend to remember shorter titles. So life coaching, two words. So keep, it, keep your title to between one and three words. Plumber, real estate agent. You notice that these titles that have that, that gone mainstream are, are short. Okay, so, so just, just remember that. I'm giggling because that's one of my other gifts is I can read the energy of titles. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> wow, powerful. So, yeah. Energy. Else, that kind of thing. Yeah, excellent. All right, so um, thank you, Barbara, for your question and for, for sharing your intro. Uh, you know, we're, we're five minutes to the end of the call, so I want to do a couple of things here. One is I want to do a popcorn, you know, questions that, that I can answer fairly quickly. There have been some in the chat who asked questions that I couldn't get to. So um, uh, think about what question that, that uh, you didn't hear an answer to that could be quick. And please post that in the chat now. And while you're thinking about that, I do want to mention and, and, um, that right now I actually have room for a couple of clients. So if you're interested in working with me, if you have been looking for a business or marketing coach um, and you like how I work and actually you like how this call went, I actually do these calls with my clients, my group of small group of clients every other week. So we literally do this. They come onto the call. Everybody on the call gets to do their elevator speech and get feedback every two weeks. So they're kind of always honing and refining and, and resonating. So let me know if you're interested in, in being one of my clients. Um, I basically enroll twice a year. So, um, all right. Uh, Shweta has a question, which is, and since, um, and this is just a, I'm going to try to answer quickly. So uh, Shweta, hello, and I'm sorry, I can't bring you on this time. Uh, but Shweta says, um, I understand what you're saying regarding like-minded audiences, but what if you want to raise awareness with like-minded, uh, non-like-minded, like-hearted communities. Wow. <laughs> Shweta, you are an activist. And, and that's actually, I know that that was part of previously what you did. Um, the answer is to balance yourself. Be sure that part of your time is connecting with the choir, <laughs> preaching to the choir. Here's, this is important. All of us need to, to, need to preach to the choir. Okay. Yes, part of that is also if you want to be um, a, a true educator and an activist, you also talk with people who don't get it, uh, then you educate them. But really part of your time, if you don't want to burn out and if you, if you want to actually make and have an easier time getting clients, you need to preach to the choir because the choir gets it 
and they're much more likely to, some part of the choir will much more likely to hire you. Does that make sense? So I hope that helps. Um, um, any other quick questions? And actually, if those of you who for some reason cannot chat, uh, please uh, raise your hand, like physically, I can see you. Uh, oh, uh, be before before we go any further, let me do a let me do a group picture, <laughs> okay? So if you aren't on video and are willing to unmute your video uh, for the group picture, I would love to see you there. Uh, this is fun, and um, so here's what I'll do. Uh, let, let's do two pictures. One is just a nice traditional smiling one, and the second one is kind of a crazy one. However, you want to do, okay? So from the count of three, two, one, zero, give yourself a big smile. Uh, welcome the, the community and uh, and just hold it for two seconds. Three, two, one, zero. All right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, let's do a let's do a silly one. However you want to do, be an animal, you know, be be crazy. However you want. Okay, ready? Uh, or point somewhere because if you point somewhere, you're probably going to be, you know, introducing someone else. Three, two, one, zero. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Um, anyone else have questions? Yeah, I'll take one more a quick question if anyone wants to raise their hand physically. Or if you're on the phone, you can press star six or star seven. Okay. Building your list. Great question. All right. Let me just take one minute to talk about building your list. <laughs> I'm, I'm hesitating here because my advice now is different from what my advice used to be. Um, the, the traditional advice about building your list is you've got to have an opt-in magnet. You've got to have a you know, seven steps to this or that, and then um, make people, you know, uh, put their email address in to get those seven steps. And guess what? That still works. And for some of you, that may work really well. What I prefer doing these days is I prefer to give, uh, okay, very simple. Imagine a web page that has really useful and entertaining information, like, a, like an article. Imagine a long article on a web page that speaks directly to your ideal client. Have that long and useful article on that web page, and at the bottom can be your opt in box to say, if you would like um, uh, the next article about this, or if you would like the you know, seven day or seven part series that goes further into this, please enter your email here. As opposed to how most people usually do it is they do a teaser. They don't really give you the information and then they make you feel like you have to, you're like being blackmailed into putting your email address to get the information. No, instead, flip that around. <laughs> give the information in a digestible way, the actual article or the actual video or whatever, that's useful and then they go, wow, Barbara was so, you know, that's, that was so good. Or Gina, that was so amazing. And then opt in to say, if you want more, go here. If you want to get this in your inbox, in fact, you could say, if you want to get this article and the next article in your inbox, go here. And if you want to be even more gentle about it, you can then below that to say, if you don't want to get the thing in your inbox, we want to go to the next article, click here. So they click there, they go to the next article, which is the next page. And at the bottom of the article, again, is another invitation to say, if you want to get all of these articles in your inbox one at a time so that it's digestible, put your email here. Does that make sense? So I hope that's interesting for you as a more gentle uh, uh, and loving way of list building. And with that, I have been so um, honored to be with you here on this call. I love seeing your faces and, and feeling your energy through the, through the video and through the chats. Last thing I wanna do is unmute all of you just for you to say, say hello and goodbye to everyone. So I'm just going to unmute everyone here. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. 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 See you next time. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.